guys, T-Bird here. Thanks for checking out this workshop. Today I'm going to be talking through my pedal sequence and the different settings on my pedals. But first I just want to state the obvious and that's I'm using my Strat. It's a 1996 model Deluxe Plus. And that just means it comes standard with the locking tuners, a roller nut, the fender lay sensor pickups. Um, it used to have a Floyd Rose tremolo on it but I swapped it out for a standard bridge. The fender lay sensors are the blue one on the neck, the silver one on the middle and the red one on the bridge. I really like the tone configuration of this guitar. This bottom tone here operates the bridge and the middle pickups, and I run that at 5. This tone here operates the neck pickup, and I run that at 10. And I find that that, as far as EQ go, works really well together. Um, for the different sounds I'm trying to achieve in different settings and that. Otherwise, I'm using my Fender Silverface Bassman head and cab. It's a 40 watt head, class AB amp. I'm going to get more into the different classes of amps in my next workshop. It's got 6L6 power tubes, 12 AX7 preamp tubes. I'm running it into a 2x12 cab. I run it at about 4 because if it goes much past 4, it starts to break up. Otherwise, I'm running yeah, my guitar into my pedals, my pedal into my amp, amp into the 2x12 cab. It's mic'd up with a Shaw SM57 into my interface, into my computer. So that's how I'm getting my sounds. Let's get into it. Okay, so from my guitar, I go into this junction box. From the junction box, I go into my looper. It's a 10 looper with two additional loops, so it's essentially a 12 looper. I'm going to get to that more in a second. But my first loop is my first stage. Second loop is my second stage. Third loop is my third stage. Um, the fourth loop is a spare at the moment. The fifth loop is the scrubs. From my scrubs, I go out to my volume pedal loop. From there, I go actually straight to my compressor. So I run my compressor after all my drives. I like to do this because that way my compressor isn't pushing my drives. Sometimes, it, depending on how you run your compressor, it um, can add more gain to your drives, like it pushes it. From the compressor, I go to my volume pedal. This is a passive volume pedal. To be honest, if you're running a looper and you've got a lot of decent cabling, then you're not going to really notice if your volume pedal's passive, in my opinion. I run my tuner off my volume pedal. One of the great features of this tuner that obviously you might be aware of is that you just can strum all your strings at once and it will give you a reading as to what's sharp and what's flat. So you can at just one strum determine what you need to prioritise in regards to your tuning. If you don't have much time, that's a really helpful feature. Also, it's got a very small footprint which is great on a pedal board. From my volume pedal I go back to my looper, the next loop is my holy grail reverb pedal, after that it's another spare loop, then from there I go to my DM2 and then to my timeline. I love touring with this pedal because you can have all your presets determined in banks and then you can copy and paste the presets to the order of the song list. So that's really a practical feature that I find useful and I use it all the time, even on a Sunday morning. If you get a song list, you've got the um, patches preset there, you can copy and paste those into the order of the song list and that just makes life a whole lot easier. Other than that, it's just, just got so many different cool sounds. Sometimes I think it's definitely a bit too complicated but it's just a matter of getting your head around it and then before you know it, it's just, yeah, too easy. Then I go to a spare loop again. And from that spare loop, I go on to this other loop on the side, which is my Strymon reverb pedal, which I leave on most of the time. It's a great reverb pedal. It's definitely a bit more complicated than the Holy Grail. I can't get some of the sounds from this Blue Sky as I can get from the Holy Grail. And I've tried using this Blue Sky for some of the sounds that I use the Holy Grail for, and I can't do it. And I just think that that's kind of a great combination to have both obviously the Holy Grail and the Blue Sky which is why I have two reverb pedals. And then from there I go from that looper out back to the junction box and that has dual mono outs um, in which I can either run one or two amps. Now this isn't one of the most complicated setups by any means. For where I'm at and for what I need to do this is more than enough. And some guys, I mean you look at some of the best guitarists of all time and they just used to have a you know, an overdrive and a wire and a lot of it is to just to do with your fingers and how you play and the sounds that you pull from your amp. So if you've got a good guitar and a good amp, you can have, you know, a few decent pedals. I mean, that's 
essentially all you need. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is my clean sound. Completely dry, no effects. I'm going to be strumming with a moderate to high intensity from my bridge to my middle to my neck pickups to give you an idea of what I guess essentially is the foundation of my sound. Now this is with my compressor. I leave it on probably 99% of the time and that's partly why I have it set so mildly. It adds a little bit of sizzle I guess you could say to my sound which I like. I'm also going to strum again with a moderate to high intensity from my bridge to my middle to my neck pickups. So you can see how my compressor doesn't do too much compression, but it just kind of boosts those lower levels quite nicely. Now this is with my compressor and a little bit of reverb. Um, I leave this reverb on again 99% of the time. Um, I like how it just adds that little bit of extra dynamic to the sound. Um, these two pedals I yeah, leave on most of the time and um, it is essentially the foundation of what I build all my other sounds off. And I think it works. Now these are my drives. I never use them all at once. At the absolute most I'll use three. Um, but I like to keep it to just one or two. I'm going to use the same chord progression essentially and then the same pickup selection from my bridge to my middle to my neck pickups, again using a moderate to high intensity strumming just to give you a clearer picture of all the different sounds. Now I use my first stage drive for intros or to push my second or third or fourth stage drives. It plays really well with these other pedals. Some pedals you find that they don't sound that good with other pedals, I find this pedal plays great with other pedals. Now I don't like it as much for the high gain settings, it's too transparent. If a pedal can be guilty of being too transparent then that's this pedal. But I find it works really well in first stage. second gain stage. I don't use this pedal too much by itself because it is quite bright. It's renowned for being quite bright um, so I'll usually use it with my first stage as well which I find balances it out quite nicely. For now though I'll run it just by itself so you can hear it. stage I will use both by itself and in combination with my first and second stages depending on how much gain I'm after. Uh, this pedal cleans up real nice but I really like it around with the gain at about four o'clock and um, I just find it really gives you that sustain and the growl that you need. <laughs> So this is a Scruzz. I really like this pedal. It's really got a nice option to blend between the overdrive aspect of this pedal and the fuzz side of this pedal. I don't use this pedal too much. I feel like it's one of those pedals that I want to use more. I'm just trying to work out how to use it more. <laughs> So this is my clean sound 
with my first, second and third stage drives added. I would never use this sound usually as you're about to see why. Um, it's just like, it's just intense. <laughs> sound like that for really um, except for maybe something like this It's so simple to use, uh, there's really not a bad sound you can get out of it. If anything, there might be too much of the decay, but it's just one knob, you turn that back. If you had to have one reverb pedal, I'd recommend this one. DM2, it's one of the original ones. I use it mainly for creating like a subtle kind of texture underneath either a plucking part or in combination with my timeline um, just to create like, yeah, it's, it's real subtle. It's not meant to be overpowering, um, but it definitely adds something kind of cool to the sound. <laughs> from my clean sound on my neck pickup with my DM2 and my Holy Grail and then adding my first stage drive and then switching to my middle pickup and adding my second stage drive and or it's just an excuse to play something fun <laughs> contributor. You just got to do your best with whatever you find yourself in any season or any situation, whatever your guitar you've got, whatever amp you've got. You know, I started off with a DS1 and a transistor amp. I think it was a Roland JC50 uh, keyboard amp. Um, I had my Ibanez and, you know, I thought that was it. And, you know, and it was at the time. And that's what I had and that was great. You know, and it's just time that you know, your, your ears change to learn about what sounds good, what doesn't. Experience helps you work out what's going to work, what doesn't. I think if you can just keep a teachable spirit and just don't be threatened by anyone. And it's easy to say that, but it's a lot harder to live that out and just try to learn from everyone and just be um, able to just bring your best. That's all you've got to do. That's all God ever wants us to do is just to bring our best. And that's all that really matters. Okay, well, I hope you've been able to get something out of this. Um, I'd love to hear your comments or your questions. You can email me at this email address. Talk soon. <laughs>